Hello. Um, what we're going to be starting today is we're going to be starting F581. Now this is the uh, first course um, in the terms of uh, e the economics uh, videos which I'm going to be doing. Even though I've already uploaded F582 which is kind of a pain in the backside really. Never mind, we'll work through it. So the first thing we're going to be doing is uh, something called market failure. And this is mainly to do with inefficiency. I just put market F inefficiency. Hopefully you're human so you can understand what F stands for and my terrible, terrible spelling. So, uh, there are, we need to ask ourselves, the first thing we need to ask is when do markets uh, operate efficiently? Well, uh, to answer that question, it's quite a good question. Um, markets operate efficiently when all, uh, sorry, yeah, when resources are fully employed uh, and we're producing at the lowest unit cost, and the consumer preferences are met. So basically, it's a mixture of all the uh, different types of efficiencies. And instead of writing it all down and all of that, I'm going to explain you through um, basically how we come to that sort of thing. So you've got market uh, operate efficient markets operate efficiently when all of the efficiencies are in place. So you had a wide range in there. I'll kind of unpick it for you. So the first one we talked talk about was the lowest unit cost part of the explanation, and that is something called productive efficiency. So. Um, productive, hopefully you know I'm talking about efficiency, if you've been listening, if you've managed to survive that is. So, uh, productive efficiency, what is productive efficiency? Well, uh, productive on economies are productively efficient when we're producing at the lowest unit cost and assuming all resources are fully utilised and employed. Yeah, so you need to say so basically, the bare bones of it is about the lowest unit cost and the resources being fully employed. But I just, I mean, what I'm going to write down here isn't the uh, textbook definition, it's just the bare bones of it, w what uh, the examiners look for when you're defining productive efficiency. So it's the uh, lowest unit cost, or lowest average unit cost to be more precise. Plus, um, all resources are fully employed and utilised. All resources are utilised, I'll just put, because I'm lazy again. All resources are uh, employed. So, that's the uh, productive part of it. Now, uh, we also talked about sort of the consumer's preferences there. So... That is something called allocative. So we've done we've done the lowest average cost and it's also employed tick. So allocative efficiency is the next one. Again, I can't put efficiency because it's a bit strenuous on my hand. So uh, product allocative efficiency. Yeah. So we talked about the preferences of the consumers being met. Now. Just a small, oh wait, actually I'll talk about that later. So allocative efficiency, yeah, it's more, more to look forward to, don't worry. So, uh, we talk about the consumer's preferences, so we assume when a, a, an economy is productively efficient, uh, that the produ uh, economy is producing at the lowest human's cost, and when we're talking about allocative, uh, we're assuming that the consumer's preferences are met. So, for example, you can have a brilliant economy that is really uh, what doing well in terms of productive efficiency uh, but is not producing what the consumers actually want and because of consumer sovereignty uh, we know that the consumer is king so basically what that means is the consumer says well we want this produced and the economy will go yeah all right we'll produce that for you so because uh, otherwise there's no demand for the product and uh, there's no point producing it no matter if you can produce the lowest average cost there's no demand you're not going to make any profit that sort of links into business sort of thing. So, allocative. Uh, we talked about consumers' preferences being met. And 
again. Uh, oh, well, actually, I think I've put, yeah, and uh, this can be changed around. You could also say, we're going to look at this in a minute, but you can also say that productive is when the economy is situated on the PPF. You go, what's PPF? Well, talk about that in a bit. So, economy is situated, just now it's situated on the PPF for now, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, so economy is situated on the PPF. Now, what else can we say about allocative efficiency? Well, uh, yeah, consumer preference is being met in returns in terms of the goods and services uh, being produced in the economy. Else. I'm sure there's something else for Alex if talking about a, a graph. I'll skip that bit. So that's the basic of what Alex efficiency is and the difference between Alex and productive. Now we can mix these two together. I'll just move out of the way because I'm rubbing it off in a minute. Right. We can mix these two together, Alex and uh, productive, to get something called Pareto. So, what is Pareto, apart from it sounding quite fancy? Uh, well, Pareto, as I said, is a mix of the two. So we know allocative is when the economy is producing at the lowest average unit cost, uh, resources are employed, sort of thing, and uh, allocative is when uh, the consumer needs, uh, preferences, if you like, being met. So how can we uh, combine this in a way? Well, you could say that uh, if the economy is being both productive and allocative, there's no way it can improve itself in terms of efficiency. So that tells us that if we make, if we try and make it in a better situation, the economy, we're going to make someone else worse because we're assuming that it can't be improved if they're mixed together. Uh, but if if we do try to improve it, then obviously someone else is going to get uh, affected. So, that's our first major sentence, so we'll put this in the textbook definition for you. So, it assumes that you can't, oh, sorry, so I'll start, I can start that off better, not looking at the textbook at all. So, there is given way to improve the current allocation and allocation is just a fancy word for how it's laid out so I think allocation of resources So, in such a way that it will. So, I'm trying to do this a bit slower so you understand basically what I'm saying. Well, that it will improve. How's it worded in here? Um, someone's economic position without making some on worse off. So that's the main, that's the perfect definition there. So, I mean, you can shorten it if you like. I mean, you just need, uh, there's no way to improve current allocation resources uh, so it improves someone's economic position without making someone else worse off. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't think 
I mean, you can word it differently, but you need all the points in there, just about. Uh, there's no way to allocate, change the allocation of resources to make someone else better off than uh, someone else. No, I'm making someone else worse off, sorry. So, hopefully you've got that down. Uh, we're going to go on to the next exciting bit of this topic. So, I talked before about the PPF and I just um, went ahead and was like, this is a PPF, you're going to learn it and not give you any guidance of what a PPF is. So I'm going to tell you what a PPF is now. Uh, yeah, so I'm just looking at a diagram now, but that's not really to do with it. I'm going to draw some random diagram. Okay, so uh, a PPF, you have two axes. And I'm going to say yours is going to be a lot smarter than mine. Because I can't draw at all today, so I'm fine now. So this is your axis there. No? So, uh, one of the first things you need to do, so that's what the diagram looks like. I'm going to label it now, but that's uh, the basic diagram, so without any um, labels on it. The first thing you need to add, because if you don't add this, uh, the markers, the examiners, won't give you any marks at all. So, you need to label it PPF. Now, PPF stands for uh, production. I'll just underline where you're getting the PPF from. Production. Possibility. Frontier. Now, what this basically shows, I'm not going to write this down because I'm not going to have enough room. What this basically shows is the maximum, uh, the combination of two goods or resources, uh, assuming uh, goods or services, assuming the full and efficient use of resources. So that's what a PPF shows. So uh, we could just have, and I you use this diagram in F five eight two, but as we're talking about F five eight one, uh, this is looking at uh, one economy, so a one good or yeah one economy. It's not the national economy; it's just one. Um, so. Could be any good, so we could do, uh, I don't know, healthcare. And uh, all other goods. I'll just put all of the other GNS. And it just means all of the goods and services. So, uh, what you need to do, and I'm going to show you, um, what I'm first going to show you here, is I'm just going to put a couple of points on the diagram and uh, I will show you uh, what each of them means and how we can determine in terms of uh, produ productive efficiency. We're going to relate to uh, the topic of inefficiency. Now you can, uh, as, I, as I was going to say, before I interrupted myself, you can show opportunity cost on this. And I don't think it's entirely related uh, to this diagram here, what we're going to draw. But I'm going to um, show it you anyway because it, it will be useful in future topics that we'll cover. So I'll just. Now, these points, it, it doesn't matter just generally where they are along the curve. Or oh, to an extent, B and C don't really matter, but A and D, for the purpose of what I'm going to be talking about, it, it really does matter because you could get bored of my voice. So you've got B, C, D. Just remembering how to do the alphabet would help. So, we've got A, B, C, D, E, and F. Obviously not, obviously not following the, um, the alphabet there at all. I was just giving a few examples of some letters. Anyway, so, um, what? how can we relate this to efficiency? Well, as we say, uh, as we know, productive efficiency is the uh, full and efficient use of resources uh, assuming the lowest cost, sort of thing. Obviously, that's not the textbook definition, that's just the bare bones of it. So, we can say that all uh, A, B, C, D are productively efficient as a, along situated on the PPF curve. But uh, as we don't know the consumers, as I say, if this is just what you're given or what you draw, and um, the uh, case study does not tell you the consumer's preferences 
in the economy, you can't say which one's uh, allocatively efficient. However, you can say that it's probably going to be B or C, because no economy wants to uh, produce all healthcare and no other goods and services, or only all other goods and services, and no healthcare. I mean, that's just uh, basic logic, really. You won't want to go, right, you know, sack production, TVs, anything that could uh, enjoy our lives or involve it. Uh, but I want some NHS. I want uh, just that's all I want from my just healthcare. I don't want to actually do anything else in my life. If that's the way you think, well, you're gonna live longer than the people who think the other way around. But your life's gonna be quite dull. And that's coming from me, so it's got to mean something. So as we said, you, A, B, C, D are all productively uh, efficient. However, B and C probably like to be. Uh, the allocatively efficient, but we don't know that. So, what can we say about E? Well, because E is situated inside the PPF, what we can say is it's productively inefficient. Because uh, as our current PPF, this shows our current uh, maximum combination sort of thing of our goods and resources, so we could be producing an A, B or C or D, but we're only producing an E. So we could produce a, more of both goods or, or services, for example depending on which one you want to uh, produce more of, but you could produce both of more of them, if that makes sense. So we know that, that A is definitely not where we want to be, but that means it's productively not efficient and definitely allocatively not efficient. Well, it's definitely not productive, we're not sure about allocative, but it's definitely not productive. Okay. So what can we say about F? Well, we know that F is outside the PPF, so we can't produce any more with our current allocation of resources uh, than along the PPF. So F must mean well, we can't physically produce it at the given moment in time, but say if we find um, an improvement in technology, for example, uh, uh, then we can shift the PPF. Well, there's actual economic growth, uh, which is again an F582 topic, but you all link these in together. So F. We could say that we could produce it in the future, uh, but it's the potential we could in the future if we our resources grew. But at the moment, with our current state of resources, F is known as what is called an unobtainable point. And I've just not plucked that out of thin air, that's actually what you call it. Now, I think I um, will. I'll rub that out. So I'm going to do that. I'll show you the, the, the topic of opportunity cost. So I'm going to pick a point B, and HB just means healthcare at point B. Sorry. Um, HB, and that just means we're at a point of healthcare where um, we're producing that HB. But if we're at point C along the PPF curve, um, we're producing at HC. So, uh, yeah, so we've been producing at HC. So you can see at B, we're producing more healthcare um, than at C. I mean, that's quite obvious, really, because it's, it's more along the PPF curve uh, towards uh, all of the goods and services. So what can we deduce? Well, if we draw the line down, we'd be producing at um, AC, not AB, sorry, for um, point B, and AC for all of the goods and services. Now you can see um, at point C we're producing less healthcare, but more all of the goods and services. But at B we're producing more healthcare and less of the all of the goods and services than we would be at C. So how can we show opportunity cost from this? Well, uh, we can say, assuming that we're um, at B, so let's, let's say we're at B, I'll just circle that, and we want to get to C, then we move along the PPF curve towards C. Now, what implications does that have? Well, uh, we reduce the amount of healthcare we produce from HB to HC, and then we extend our um, Goods, uh, production of all of the goods and services from AB to AC. So the opportunity cost is what we've foregone. So the opportunity cost is the cost of uh, the next op next best alternative foregone. So the next best alternative foregone is uh, HB minus HC. That shows the opportunity cost. 
So really all you need to talk about when you're describing a PPF diagram in terms of opportunity cost is the two levels of, uh, yeah, sorry, the two points actually, two points along the PPF. Um, the amount you lose, the amount you gain, uh, the opportunity cost is the amount you lose. And that's basically uh, what you need to say and why you're doing that because you want to produce more of um, all the goods and services that's why you move along the PPF. Hopefully if that hasn't completely bored you we're going to have more fun uh, so we'll see you in the next video.